if you see this pile of stuff like this, don't step in it. <laughs> <laughs> You see the straight back, you see the wide flanks, the muscles that carry down through the legs. All that's on purpose. That's why these cattle are here. You could not go out and put together a herd like this because of the genetics. But we've been working on it for many years. I've always liked the land, I've always liked animals. It's a completely different type of life compared to what I do every day. Muy bien, gracias. I'm uh, Dr. Mitchell Wong, and I'm the uh, founder of Austin Eye Clinic. We established Austin Eye in June of 1969. I'm a third generation Chinese. My grandfather migrated to Mexico during the time when the transcontinental railroads were being built. So he was in Mexico, but he came with his wife, which was very unusual. His name was Dun Wong, and my grandmother's name was Li Shi Wong. They came from the border area in China. I mean, it was Canton province. Specifically, the village is Toisan, and they speak Toisanwa. At that time, in that region, economic times were rough and there was famine. So they came to try to make money to send back to their families in China. When Pancho Villa was involved with the Mexican independence and Mexican Revolution, he made a foray into the United States. And so the United States sent General Pershing to bring Pancho Villa in line. General Pershing pursued Pancho Villa for about three years in Mexico. My grandfather uh, was a baker. He was part of the group that was supporting Pershing's army and cooking for them. So he came to the United States when Pershing's army came back across the border and settled in San Antonio. My grandfather raised his family in San Antonio. There were seven children his grocery store was called Sing Chong. I can remember him telling me, the grocery business is a good business because people always have to eat. My uh, dad's brothers all opened grocery stores in San Antonio. My dad was the only son that went away from San Antonio to start his life. I think this could have been related to my mother's influence. My father's name was Fred Wong, and my mother's name was Rose Chin. She was never satisfied with the status quo. Her mind was always thinking of new things to do and new horizons to conquer. She was from uh, Chelsea, Massachusetts. Her dad, wanted to separate himself from the big group of Chinese that was on the West Coast. And so he went all the way to the East Coast and he opened up a hand laundry. The charge was 19 cents per shirt. That's all they did was shirts. But he raised a big family on hand laundry. My mother and dad initially wanted to open a store in Corpus Christi. When my dad was preparing the store, he got a visit from a certain group of people that kind of told him that they didn't want him to settle in Corpus Christi. They did not want an influx of Asians, and so they took up the welcome mat, and, and my parents decided to come to Austin. Austin's motto was Austin the Friendly City, and it was a friendly city. Their first store was at uh, 714 Red River. This was the era of the family grocery stores. You could open a small grocery store 
and it would be a neighborhood grocery store, and you could make a living for your family. Initially when we came, there were very few Chinese families. And so I grew up as one of the few Chinese in Austin. In those days, they would call you a Chinaman. And uh, my mama said, no, no, you tell them you're an American Chinese. And she would, quote, call their parents, end of issue. I don't know if she ever called them or not. <laughs> But at least uh, she had my back, so I, I wasn't worried. And I grew up during the war. There was a period of time, I think, when we went around and we wore a little sign that says we were not Japanese. But I didn't know that there was prejudice. I didn't know we were fighting the Japanese. I was just a, a young child growing up in Austin. I wasn't looking for prejudice, look, wasn't looking for any animosity, and didn't see any animosity. It was a idyllic childhood. My dad, he eventually had four or five stores all on the east side. As a matter of fact, my dad was fluent in Spanish. That was necessary for the customer base that he had. So we were actually kind of cosmopolitan. At home, we spoke English. So most of the Chinese that I spoke was actually with my grandmother. She always told me to marry a Chinese girl because I couldn't speak Chinese that well. <laughs> my mother she began painting later on, and she actually became very well known for her artwork. Her main forte was portrait painting, but she could paint landscapes, flowers, birds. She just saw something, she just painted it. And that was just her natural ability. Growing up, my mother and father never emphasized an education but they did instill us with principles of honesty and hard work. I knew the grocery business. I knew every aspect of the grocery business having grown up in it. A mom and pop store works seven days a week, every day of the year. I wasn't expecting any holidays because we never had any holidays. I'd been working about 15 hours one day and I was kind of home resting and my dad came in and he said, uh, you can be in the grocery store business or you can try school. And so I thought for a few seconds, it didn't take me long. And I said, well, I think I want to try school. On the first day I attended University of Texas, somebody mentioned that they were having a get together at the Baptist Student Union. And on that particular meeting, the coordinator had invited some other students from Mary Harden Baylor there, which is an all-girls school up the road about 60, 70 miles. And I walked in, being the first day of school, just looking around. I was more interested in the food. But lo and behold, there was a young lady there named Rose, the same name as my mother. And I just, it was love at first sight. So I introduced myself and we started talking. We didn't go out together for a date for two years. She was not interested in me. She went out with me first date as a lark because she was from China and I was from America. It's very unusual for foreign born Chinese and locally born Chinese to get together. But things develop from there. It's just serendipitous. I only know two roses. <laughs> Both of them have thorns. <laughs> so you better be real careful how you handle them. <laughs> as I was getting close to the end of my degree, it was zoology. I applied to be a game warden because 
I really like to fish and I really like to ride around the lake in a boat with a motor and have somebody else pay for the gas. And I remember making the second round of interviews and they said, uh, don't call us, we'll call you. And I'm still waiting for the call. But when I realized I wasn't gonna be able to be a game warden, then I decided I would go to medical school. And I was with some really smart guys who were interviewing at medical school. They were talking about answering world problems, solving this problem, that problem. And they asked me, and I said, well, I don't know too much about world problems or how to solve them, but I do know about the grocery business. I just, that was just honest answer. So I got admitted to medical school. Rose and I, we have four children, two of which became ophthalmologists. And uh, Shannon, my youngest son, and I practiced together. If somebody asked me who I was or what I was, I would say that I'm an American Chinese. Austin's my home. Texas is the state I live in. And the United States is the country uh, that I belong to and am loyal to. But we have not forgotten our roots from where we came and the values that our family instilled upon us. My father was 90 and my mother was uh, 96 when they passed. And uh, they loved Texas. And so, uh, we gave their final rest here, and this is where they'll stay forever. They have a nice view. We uh, made this area so that uh, it can be our family plot. They actually work pretty hard all their life. So that's how all this came about. If I didn't go to school, I wouldn't have the opportunity to have uh, get a professional degree or to establish the ranch. But it all came from the grocery business. Even to this day, I, I know how to work in a grocery store. Uh, I just walk in and I feel very at home in a grocery store, but that's not my, that's not my job anymore. <laughs>